Assalamu alaikum lovely students. Today we'll be looking at Godnirella vaginalis. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comments section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. But before talking about Godnirella in detail, we should know how the bacteria are classified. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes or sheets in some places, also into acid fast bacteria on the basis of acid fast stain. We are going to talk about that in our upcoming videos, like Nocardia asteroides is weakly acid fast bacterium. And there's also an exception that is a mycoplasma bacterium. On the basis of gram staining, bacteria are further classified into gram negative and gram positive. Today we are talking about gram positive Gardnerella vaginalis, so we are not talking about gram negative. So we'll skip the gram negative classification here. If you want to know more about the bacteria classification, I do have a video on that. Gram positive bacteria are further classified into cocci and rods, and rods are further subdivided into non spore forming and spore forming. Non spore forming are further subdivided into filamentous, for example, Gardnerella vaginalis, Nocardia actinomyces. We are discussing Gardnerella vaginalis today, and also into non filamentous, for example, Chlorinibacterium diphtheria and Listeria monocytogenes. I do have videos on these two, be sure to check them out. The spore forming rods, like aerobic, for example, example bacillus and anaerobic for example clostridium gardnerella vaginalis it's a small facultative gram variable rod the term gram variable refers to the observation that some organisms are purple while others are pink in gram stained specimen whose gram stained specimen definitely the gardnerella's specimen structurally gardnerella has a gram positive cell wall but the wall is thin and in older organisms, like in older Gardnerella, they tend to lose. Gardnerella vaginalis causes bacterial vaginosis, as it's bacteria and, is, and it causes infection in vagina. That, that's why it is named bacterial vaginosis. And it's non-specific vaginitis. Itis is a word that is used for inflammation. And in bacterial vaginosis, there are no inflammatory changes seen. That's why it's named vaginosis not vaginitis. In this picture, you can see Gardnerella vaginalis. Lecture outline. As we are done with the introduction and classification, now we'll be looking at morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology. Gardnerella vaginalis is rod-shaped bacterium. It is pleomorphic. It is cocobacillus. Let me explain these two terms to you. Pleo means many and morph is for shape. So this bacterium has got different shapes. The second word, cocobacillus, it shows the shapes. Coco is for circular bacteria and bacillus is for rods. Gardnerella varies in size from 1 to 1.5 micrometers. It is purple or pink colored bacterium. I've explained the reason earlier that older organisms tend to lose their cell wall, the gram-positive cell wall. That's why they are shown as gram-negative on gram staining. Structure. Thin to no cell wall. Normally, Gardnerella has a gram-positive cell wall, but the wall is thin. And in older organisms, this wall is lost because of their age, right? Gardnerella is not capsulated it is without a capsule it is non-spore forming it is non-motile and it is cocobacillus as you can see in this picture this is the bacillus form and this is the coccus form right so that's why this bacterium is cocobacillus let me zoom in so you can see clearly this is its bacillus form and this is its coccus form habitat Human beings are its definitive hosts because it causes infection in humans. Transmission. Bacterial vaginosis is not transmitted by any sexual activity, but it's considered to be a dysbiosis in which the bacterium, the lactobacillus that normally lives in vagina, is replaced by Gardnerella vaginalis. Or in some people, Gardnerella is part of their normal vaginal flora, so it grows more in number, like it's overgrowth. These things can cause 
bacterial vaginosis. And there are certain risk factors that can increase the placement of lactobacillus with Gardnerella vaginalis or the overgrowth of Gardnerella. And these are recent antibiotic use if a person is suffering from any kind of bacterial infection and they start to use um, antibiotics to treat that infection, they might be at risk to develop bacterial vaginosis. Low estrogen levels, use of intrauterine devices, IUDs, doubting, certain baths, multiple sexual partners, previous infection, smoking and obesity. Pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of bacterial vaginosis is uncertain, but Gardnerella vaginalis is often found in association with anaerobes such as Mobiluncus and Prevotella, and non-anaerobes such as Mycoplasma hominis and Urea plasma urolyticum. Together, they cause the signs and symptoms of bacterial vaginosis. As you can see, this is a picture of female reproductive system. So we are supposed to figure out the location where this infection occurs, the bacterial vaginosis. It occurs here in vagina. This is ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, cervix, and vagina. Clinical findings. Bacterial vaginosis is characterized by vaginal discharge, that is malodorous, which means foul-smelling, white or gray-colored, and this discharge has a characteristic fishy odor. Inflammatory changes, as I mentioned earlier, are typically absent, which is why it is called vaginosis rather than vaginitis. The term itis is used whenever there are inflammatory changes present. But there, in bacterial vaginosis, there are no inflammatory changes. That's why it's vaginosis, not vaginitis. There is valvular irritation present and mild itching may occur, which is also termed as vaginal pruritus. Women with bacterial vaginosis have a high incidence of preterm deliveries, and that can increase the incidence of morbidity, which means the rate at which diseases occur, and mortality, which means the rate at which deaths occur of newborn children. Lab diagnosis will need samples of vaginal discharge and blood. On microscopy, we'll find clue cells, which are vaginal epithelial cells covered with bacteria. And on gram staining, this bacterium is gram variable, which means it's pink or purple, gram positive and gram negative both. It is rod shaped, but sometimes we can also see some of its cocci form there. So that's why this bacterium is also cocobacillus. It varies in size from 1 to 1.5 micrometers. It's purple or pink in color. As you can see, Gardnerella vaginalis, this is how it looks like under the microscope with its coccus form. It's all pink right there in this light culture. Colonies are small, circular, convex, gray, and they appear on chocolate agar or modified peptone starch dextrose blood agar. On physical examination, we'll find light reflex on vaginal walls and there might be cervicitis present. In addition, the WIF test, which consists of treating the vaginal discharge with 10% KOH and smelling a pungent fishy odor, and that's often positive. And also, we can go for measuring the vaginal pH. A pH of greater than 4.5%, that's supposed to diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis. Treatment. The drug of choice for bacterial vaginosis is metronidazole, but we can also go for clindamycin. Prevention. Treatment of sexual partners is not recommended, and there's no vaccine available for bacterial vaginosis. Alright guys, let's review everything in this short table. The organism we discussed today is Gardnerella vaginalis. It is responsible for causing bacterial vaginosis, which is also termed as non-specific bacterial vaginitis. And its mode of transmission is like there's just dysbiosis and there are certain risk factors associated with it, like low estrogen levels, use of IUDs, smoking, obesity, and recent antibiotic use or infection. Human beings are its hosts. Its diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, whiff test, and culture. It is treated with metronidazole and clindamycin. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. And also, if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, Twitter, and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.